In the last year, Penduo Duo went from $200 a share all the way down to the low 50s, almost a 75% drop. So the question investors are probably asking themselves is, is now a good time to buy? Is it a good investment? In order to answer that question, I'm going to give my price target. We're going to look at 2021 Q3 results. We're going to look at the financials, the share price history. And lastly, I'll share my final thoughts on Penduo Duo as an investment. If you like videos on personal finance, investing, and stock analysis such as this one, please consider subscribing to my channel. Also, if you found anything helpful, please hit that like button. And now, back to your content. All right, now my price target for Pinduo Duo is $74 to $90 in the next 12 months. This is about a 20 to 45% upside. Now, on the high side of this at $90 a share, this is assuming that fears around investing in China go away. Um, however, I think that is a really optimistic scenario mainly because there's no indications that that fear is going to subside anytime soon. Now, the downside on this is about $50 share or about a 20% risk. So you can see that the, the more conservative, around $74, has a 20% upside, but also the downside risk is also around 20%. If we see any more um, action happening in China, I think we're going to see it drip down to the $50 range. Um, but we really are tied to sentiment here. Also, anything affecting growth related to Penduo Duo will also have an effect um, to the negative side. So we're going to talk about some of these factors as we go throughout the rest of the video. Now for a brief business description, Penduo Duo describes itself as the largest agricultural focused technology platform in China, and they have a goal to be the world's largest grocery store. They've seen huge growth in the last few years. And one of the things that makes them special is they try to integrate social aspects into the buying experience on their platforms. Penduo Duo released their Q3 2021 earnings on November 26. Earnings per share came in at 34 cents. Analyst estimates were at 4 cents per share, or they're able to beat the estimate by about 30 cents, or 750%. On the revenue side, they had a disappointment here. They reported $3.36 billion in revenue compared to analyst expectations at $4.03 billion, or they missed expectations by $670 million, or about 16%. All right, moving into Q3 2021 highlights. Now they had 867.3 million active buyers in the last 12 months, or 19% year-over-year growth. Average um, monthly active users um, increased 15% year-over-year to 741.5 million. Um, on the revenue side, they saw 51% year-over-year growth up to 21.5 uh, billion um, RMB. On a non-GAAP, non-GAAP net income um, went up, was up 15% to 3.1 uh, billion RMB. All right, moving on into growth, you can see that it had 19% year-over-year growth from this time last year. Now, the thing that you want to really pay attention to is net ads. Now, for the last, so for the five quarters leading up to December of 2020, that was steadily increasing from the low 40s all the way up to the higher 50, um, 50 uh, I think 50 million, 57 million in this quarter, down to 35, 26, and then 17 million respectively. Now on monthly active users, you can also see a very, very sharp decline here um, in the last three quarters compared to some of the other quarters as well. You can see 51, 5.9, a downtrend there, 81, 74, 76, and then 4, um, 4 million, 3.9 million, and 3, which are substantially larger than the majority of the numbers over here. So my point is you can start to see this starting to flatten out. If you did like a line graph, um, you can kind of, you'll see it that's going, starting to go up and then it starts to level off. That from a growth perspective is not a good trend. So you're going to want to see in Q4 that to start to get back to at least maybe 40 or 50 for monthly average users to get kind of back to where they were. Um, and again, same thing for active buyers. You're going to want to see that much higher than, than 35 in order to really see the, the growth we saw before. Now, for them to grow at the, the exact same growth rate, they would actually have to be higher than these numbers. But at this point, I highly doubt that's going to be the case. All right. Now, here's something that we really want to pay attention to. Um, on the revenue side, you can see that 55% year over year in increase as we as we stated earlier however what you're seeing is here you saw a sharp increase in uh, for q4 of 2020 um, stronger numbers there you can see that it looks like revenues from excluding merchandise sales has continued to rise over the last several quarters although between q2 and q3 it really wasn't very substantial and q4 is a little bit busier time of the year so that that makes sense why it was higher 
I think it's you. It could be challenging, um, at least for if you're um, adding merchandise sales. I don't think they're going to hit earnings estimates, or they're going to have a year-over-year -year decline, based off of what I'm seeing here. I don't think they can make up what they had in merchandise sales. You can see that's been declining precipitously, all the way up to you know five billion RMB down to two billion RMB down to basically you know, 82 million. I mean, huge, huge decline there. Um, even though their their uh, revenues, excluding merchandise sell, have continued to go up. Now on the non-GAAP profit side, you can see as a percentage of total revenues, this has also been declining slightly in, in you know, um, starting in Q4 um, and has start, started to increase back up, but we're still not back to what we saw, you know, for the majority of 2019 and um, for the majority of, for the end of 2019 and 2020. Now, from a cost perspective, I think one of the concerning things is here. I believe part of this is tied to, to um, merchandise sales. However, you can see that they had pretty good cost in comparison of their revenue, and now we've seen a forked 4x times, nearly 4x times there. And they're still about double from where they were last year in the cost to, to do everything. And so they've doubled the cost of um, cost of revenues, and they've only, I believe, risen cost of revenues by 55%. So there's about 100% increase in cost versus a increase in profit by 55% or increase in, um, increase in revenues by 50, 53%. Again, on the cost structure side, general and administrative stuff, that's continued to tick up in this last quarter. They were able to bring it down. Um, research and development expenses, this is just continuing to rise over time. If we go over to the profitability section, you can see that we finally made a profitable, I was actually anticipating it to be um, you know, in Q1 that we possibly might see that. Um, you're seeing this start to decline and they're getting pretty close and they actually had um, a pretty big, um, you know, pretty big decrease if you're comparing it to quarter over quarter. But, uh, you know, in the last two quarters, they've been able to actually have a non-GAAP operating profit, which is really good to see. On the net income side, also recording um, net income, which is great. Um, we can finally do some, you know, project out some future cash flow or um, future price to earnings um, or forward earnings, I should say. Um, cash and cash equivalents, you know, looking at this, you can see that they're basically not super big from the end of the year last year, um, but they still have solid um, solid balance balance sheet from how much cash and cash equivalents they have compared to last year. All right, jumping into the financials on a quarterly basis. Um, first off, right off the bat, let's look at revenue. So on the Q3, it was actually a 55% increase from the, the Q3 of 2020. However, you can see that it's actually been kind of getting a little bit more stagnant. We talked about this earlier as things start to get a little bit more flat on from a growth perspective. You can see on the year over year growth from a quarterly basis, this is the lowest growth quarter over quarter that they've had in the last one, two, three, four, five quarters. Um, gross profit seems to be doing fairly well. Um, basically, it looks like in this scenario, they've been able to actually have a higher yeah, gross profit margin in the last three quarters compared to where they, well, yeah, compared to the last three quarters. So that's optimistic that they're turning, they're, they're bringing that closer to the bottom line. Now on the EBITDA standpoint, this actually went positive for the first time in Q2 of 2021, so last quarter. So now they've had two quarters of positive EBITDA and the same thing on net income. Being able to take that revenue and turn it into net income is extremely important. And the, the net income margin is around 10% or 7% for the latest quarter. And, and if you wanna look at the earnings per share side, 18 cents for the last quarter, which is which is Q3, which is I reported the non-GAAP measure. This is the GAAP measure, and they were able to beat earnings per share on both of those. So um, it just depends on which one you're reporting on. So either way, they did, they did good um, in, in order to turn that into a positive number instead of it being negative. All right, looking at shares outstanding in the last year from March 20, uh, March 30th of 2020 to March 30th of 2021. So this is a little bit lagged. They've increased shares outstanding by about 7% from 1.64 billion uh, billion shares outstanding to 1.253 billion. 
So this is just important to keep in mind if you're considering an investment or a current investor, you wanna make sure that shares are outstanding aren't increasing too much in comparison to growth. So just keep that in mind as you're thinking about Pinduoduo as an investment. All right, looking at Pinduoduo stock price over the last year, if you bought it this time last year, you'd be down about 60%. And if you were able, well, I shouldn't say able, but if you were unlucky and bought at the high, you're down about 70% at one time down almost 75%. Now, currently, one of the things I have, uh, I have weighted into my stock price, um, my stock price target is that I believe as we approach $74 a share, this is going to be a resistance line that the stock is going to bounce off of. Now, if nothing changes from a, a if, if we see some things happen from, a, uh, a growth perspective, we see that to start to grow again. If we see uh, fears in China start to, to fade away, I think we can break up into the $90 level. I, I really do think that's possible. I do think we are going to hit uh, you know, a couple more resistance lines before that ever occurs. And if this does continue to go down in the short term, as fears are almost at their all-time highs, or at least in the last year and a half they are, who knows if they could go lower down into that $50 range. Um, or if we see in the next quarterly a result that um, growth is slowing even further, or we have a decrease in net income. Um, those are some of the major concerns I have. All right, now for my final thoughts. I do believe the price target of $74 to $90 in the next 12 months is a possibility. I do think we have significant downside down to the $50 a share. Now that's gonna have, be driven by fears with China, um, any issues we see in Q4 of uh, Pinduoduo Duo seeing slower growth, or we have a decrease year over year um, in revenue, which I think is a possibility here if you're looking historically and what they had in Q4 of 2020, it was pretty high. And I don't know, I mean, they may say excluding merchandise sales, um, it'll be a little bit of a growth, but I'm not expecting a ton of growth for Q4 based off of the historical trends of the last three quarters. Now, with all that being said, I do think there is that possibility to get up into that $74 to $90 range, and that's going to be driven by we see the reverse of the fears. We see growth starting to go back up. We see the fears with China starting to be resolved. We see macro conditions around, or maybe could be could be micro issues if you're talking specifically from a global to a China issue. But point is, if we see um, growth concerns, buying concerns from China also decrease, then um, I also think you could see that grow as well. We're going to want to see their uh, monthly active users also continue to grow up and their net ads grow. So that has been trending down. We've seen, uh, so monthly active users have been trending down. We've also seen um, the yearly buyers or whatever it is go down as well. So um, there's several concerns here with Duo. Now I think the price target is a little bit, um, the risk reward isn't necessarily there, right? I think it could go equally down as much as it goes up. I think the $90 is a very, very, very optimistic scenario if everything, if they execute on everything perfectly. And I just don't think, I don't believe that is going to be a possible scenario. Now, this is a highly volatile stock. It's like I said, dropped down about 75% in the last year, and it could continue to go down. Right, right now where we're at, I think it's going to be trading at around, if they're able to get the exact same um, net income, around 250 to 350 million, um, I think their P&E will be somewhere around 60. Um, now, if the price continues to go down, that'll be a little bit higher, give or take. But at their current price, it'd be about 60 if we're looking forward, looking for um, the combination of the last three quarters of 2021 and the first quarter of 2022 if we're able to still get the same net income i think that is possible however we you know they still have to execute on increasing revenue which i think there's a big risk there we're seeing decreasing growth we got to get it we got to reverse that trend um so there's a lot of things that pendo adua has to execute on and be effective at that i don't think the 90 dollars is extremely reasonable to you know maybe like a five maybe a 10 percent chance it's a very very low chance there I think it's about a 50-50% chance that they hit go 20% upside, 20% downside. Now, the last thing I'll add to that is on the $74 a share, I do believe as the stock price approaches that, it could bounce off at multiple times as that's the last uh, major line of resistance. Now, if it continues to go down up a little bit, 
we could just see it start to go flat for a period of time as the growth continues to be muted. Um, but any increase in growth, any any other thing is going to actually cause this cause the stock to shoot up a little bit. Um, but we still have the major concern with China regulation that is affecting all Chinese stocks right now. Now, for me right now, Pin Duo Do It is an extremely attractive investment as the risk reward just quite isn't there yet. I believe that in Q4 of 2021, there is going to be some significant action, um, at least in the stock price. Now, I can't say one way or which way it's going to go, but I think Q4 is going to be pretty pivotal as I think if we see a decrease of revenue quarter, um, quarter over quarter, um, that's going to be bad. And if China stuff can, you know, even if China things resolve, um, that alone is going to turn it from a growth stock into just an ordinary stock and the growth growth story ends. So you got to keep those things in mind. I think there's a pretty strong chance that they do have a year over year decrease in revenue, which is going to be a big deal. Thank you so much for watching. I do videos on personal finance, investing and stock analysis. So if you've liked this type of content, please, please consider subscribing. If you found anything helpful, please hit that like button. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Frank, Frank Finance, out.